on a subject with your neighbor as you're taking your seats and just say, neighbor, oh neighbor, tell them I'm assured. I'm assured. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I'm assured. There is a story of a father and a son whose house caught fire one night. And the young boy was forced to flee to the roof of the house. The father, however, was able to make it outside and he stood on the ground below with outstretched arms calling to his son, jump, I'll catch you. He knew the boy had to jump in order for his life to be saved. And all the boy could see, however, was flame and smoke and blackness. And as can be imagined, the boy was afraid to leave the roof. The boy was afraid to leave the place of safety. But his father kept yelling, jump, I will catch you. But the boy protested, daddy, I can't see you. But the father replied to the son, but I can see you. And that's all that matters. And oftentimes that is exactly how our lives can feel. We get a word from God that says, trust me, I got you. We get a word that says, depend on me, I won't let you fall. We get a word that says, jump, I'll catch you. Yet we are surrounded by uncertainty and fear and worry and sickness and hardships and distress. But can I encourage some of you who have found yourselves in a season like this young boy on the roof of this burning house. And I know you can't see everything that God is doing around you. I know you are afraid because you're surrounded by things that have the power to consume you. But God told me to tell you that if you heard him that's all the confirmation you need he's spoken clearly to you God has given you all the affirmation that you need and God says tell my sons and daughters to trust what they heard me say don't spend another season doubting. Don't spend another moment second guessing yourself. Don't waste another month. For some of you, you shouldn't even allow the month of May to close without you doing what you heard God say do. Just tell your neighbor, trust what you heard. Trust what you heard and believe that as long as God sees you, you can never fall. You got to believe that as long as God sees you, you will never lose. You got to believe that as long as God has his eyes on you, that your victory is guaranteed. And there's a different type of assurance that you have when you know that not only is someone for you, but they are also with you. I know that my husband is for me, but there are all, but there are times that he cannot physically be with me. I know my children are for me, my family is for me, my friends are for me, but there will be times when my problem is too big for them to understand and they don't have the capacity to carry it with me. Me. But Deuteronomy 31 and 6 tells us that the Lord our God goes with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. And not only will God never leave you, but right here in the middle of what you're going through, in the middle of what you're facing, I need to remind you that God is with you. Whatever you're in, he's with you in it. So no matter how long you've been in it, he is still with you. No matter who walked away from you. You. It doesn't matter who has used you or misused you. God is with you and he will be with you through every obstacle, through every hardship. He's with you when you're crying all night and he'll be with you if you need him tomorrow. The songwriter says he's a constant friend a constant friend God will be with you and what I have discovered about God is that God is a God of order he is a God of infinite wisdom and he has so much clarity he is strategic and he is very intentional he is timely and consistent God never leaves a project undone or in unfinished God does not walk away neither does he forsake God does not quit Whatever he sets out to achieve will be achieved. Promises will be fulfilled. Prayers will be answered. Answers will be revealed. Sometimes there, will, there may be a delay and times when our flesh causes us to think that God won't come through. But sooner or later, the will of the Lord will always be done. 
And we just have to have faith that God will indeed finish everything that he has started in our lives. We got to keep praying. We got to keep believing and keep hoping and keep waiting, keep trusting. And we cannot allow the enemy to make us think that there will ever be a time where we are without hope. Yes, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we are never abandoned by God. We may get knocked down, but we are still not destroyed. And is there anybody in the room tonight that has learned how to praise God? Because no matter what you have faced in your life, you're just simply grateful that you're still here. You, you've had some close calls but you made it and it just further proves that God is not finished with you yet you may have had to cry but you never quit you may have been bent but you never broke and everything that the enemy tried to do to you you are living breathing walking talking proof that everything the enemy tried just didn't work he tried to attack your body and that didn't work he tried to attack your mind he that didn't work he tried to mess in your finances and mess in your marriage he tried to ruin your friendships and he tried to make you question your assignment he tried to make you walk away from God and the church but everything that the enemy tried to do to you tried to do to me it did not work why because the Bible says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment who will condemn God will condemn and I dare somebody to remind every demon every enemy every naysayer that no matter what you throw at me from tonight until sometime 300 years later it will never work it will never work. And for many of you, under the sound of my voice, the enemy has tried everything in his power to get you to doubt God. He has tried everything in his power to take you out. And it seems that it has been one thing on the heel of another thing. And he has sought to attack every part of you and every area of your life. And some of you here tonight, right here, right now, are currently in the fight of your life. And even with all the faith you have, you can admit that this has been for some of you an unusual season. You've had to cry from a broken heart. You've had to quit and start over again. You've been stressed out because you've been let down. You spent your life sacrificing for people. But when the time came and you needed somebody to sacrifice for you, they were nowhere to be found. And it seems that the enemy has used some of his most powerful weapons to war against you in this season. But I've got a word for the house tonight and I need to remind somebody that the fight you're in right now is a fixed fight. The outcome of this battle that you're in right now has already been predetermined and it ends with you having the victory. And all you have to do is learn how to take another look at your situation. But this time remember it's not what has come against you but it is who is with you. And I dare you to let every enemy know that it's too late now because the fight has already been fixed. In fact, the fight was fixed before the fight ever started. This fight is fixed and I might be suffering, but I'm good because the fight is fixed. I might be in a low place right now, but all is well because the fight is fixed. The devil has knocked me down, but I'm going to get back up. I'm going to dust myself off because the fight is fixed and the end result of whatever it is that you you're dealing with right now uh, is going to be victory. I don't care what the devil has made you to believe. I don't care what the enemy has told you. I come as an ambassador to heaven to let you know that the end result, because it will end. And our praise, you got to learn how to make your praise twofold. I'm not only shouting because it's going to end, but I'm a praise him because it's going to end in victory. Yes, I'm excited that this won't last always, but I'm also excited that when I walk out of it, when I come through it, when I get over it, I'm going to have more peace, I'm going to have more joy, I'm going to have more love, I'm going to have more strength. Somebody have found somebody near you and tell them I'm praising him 
because it's already fixed. It's already fixed. So Romans 8 and 28 is one of the most famous verses in the Bible. And it has at some point brought comfort to many of us in times of trouble and times of uncertainty. This particular verse covers absolutely everything in your life. The good, the bad, and the indifferent. The theme of the book of Romans is the righteousness of God. Paul starts by revealing the wrath of God before he reveals the grace of God. And in the first three chapters, Paul shows the world as unrighteous and shows the world as under God's judgment. Chapters four and five, Paul shows us that the solution to our unrighteousness is faith. And in chapter six through eight, we find that there is in fact no condemnation. To those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 discusses the care that God has for each of us. Tell your neighbor God cares about you. The care that God has for each of us. And Paul's language shows the certainty of God's care. His language is definitive and it leaves no room for guessing. There's a Greek scholar by the name of Kenneth Wuess who suggests that the phrase and we know can actually be translated to say and we know with absolute knowledge. Now there are a lot of things in this life that we do not know. James wrote that we do not know what would happen tomorrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away we do not know why certain things happen even Jesus said you don't know that the day of your Lord's coming is soon but there are some things that we do know we do know that God loves and care for us. We do know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We do know that the righteous will never be forsaken. We do know that by his stripes we are already healed. And we cannot allow the enemy to cause us to abandon what we do know because of what we don't know. Because what you don't know can't defeat what you do know. And even in uncertainty, God's love and care for us is certain. Even when things seem to be crumbling around us, God's promise to deliver is certain. And tonight, you can lay your head down in the certainty of God that he indeed does care about you. And we know. No matter what happens, and we know. No matter who walks away from us, and we know. No matter the sickness that may come, and we know. No matter the financial distress, the broken heart, the confusion, and the fear, and we know. Tell your neighbor, I may not know everything, but I do know God cares about me. So, Paul not only confirms the certainty of God's care, but he also tells us about the comprehensiveness of God's care. Paul says, we know that all things work together for good. He did not say that all things are good in and of themselves. He did not say that God will keep us away from bad things or keep bad things away from us. He doesn't say that some things may work and others will not or that only the good things will work together for our good. But Paul assures us that all things. He assures us that there are no qualifications or limitations, but all things work together for our good. This is not a statement of fate, nor is it a statement of doubt, but this is a statement of faith. It can be translated to say, and we know with absolute certainty that God on an ongoing basis is causing everything to be working together for the good. Let me say it again because I think y'all missed it. We can translate the scripture to read like this. And we know with absolute certainty 
that God on an ongoing basis is causing everything to be working together for our good. And perhaps you were going through something right now that made you question if God really knows what he's doing because I don't care how saved and how sanctified you are. There is a trial that can hit your life that makes you give God the side eye and request some sort of reassurance that because this don't make no sense sense and it, re it requires you to go plead your case it requires you to hit your knees and tell God God I'm not questioning you but I do got some questions there will come a time there will come a season in your life where you have to go to God for reassurance because what you are going through doesn't make sense right now but you gotta have enough faith to believe it'll make sense after a while my grandma would say after a while and by and by but I love the wording of the statement it says God on an ongoing basis <laughs> God will continually cause everything to work for our good so not only is God's care certain not only is his care comprehensive but God's care is cohesive. Somebody shout cohesive. In the Greek, work together is just one word, soon air geo. This is where we get the English word synergy. It means the working together of various elements to produce a result that is greater than the sum. And with God, nothing is random. God is always intentional in his ways. It, it's it's kind of like this. I was at my sister's house the other night and she pulled out her watermelon and she started cutting up her watermelon and some crazy person goes to the cabinet and pulls out a, a container of salt. No. Because if you like that, see me after church so I can lay hands on you. They, they pour... They pull a container of salt out and they begin to poison the watermelon. They begin to put the salt on top of the watermelon. And we know that salt, also known as sodium chloride, it, that, that's the, the scientific name for salt, sodium chloride. But pure sodium by itself is harmful. In fact, sodium in its purest form is so reactive that it is only found connected to another element. Chloride by itself is poisonous, but when you put the two together, it's good. When, when you put sodium and chloride together, it makes your food taste better. When you put them together, it brings out the flavor in your food. And I know that the trauma was bad and the anxiety tried to hinder you. I know the pain was almost debilitating and the broke days tried to take you out. I know the heartbreak was almost too much for you to handle and the rejection didn't feel good. But when they started to work together... It made you stronger when, when they started to work together. It made you wiser when the pain and the anxiety started working together. Your praise intensified when you were broke and sad. You started to get wiser when you were broke and unhappy. You worship higher when you were broke and unhappy. Your worship crunk up to another level. And can you just hop out somebody and tell them it's all gonna work together for your good? God is so wise and God is so imminent that he will combine what should have killed you. He will take what should have taken you out. He will take what should have stopped you and he will make it work for your good. And there are things in your life that are evil in and of themselves. But when the omnipotence of God meets evil they start to mix just right and we serve a God that only he can take something that is harmful and make it helpful and the Bible tells us that both Jacob and Paul had to suffer but their mindsets and their perceptions were different because Jacob responded to suffering by saying all these things are against me 
But Paul shifted his mindset and Paul changed his perception and he was able to declare that these things are not against me, but they are working for me. And I just came by to encourage somebody tonight that you can have assurance that even in this, all you have to do is change your perception from temporary to eternal. Don't be consumed with temporary pain, temporary discomfort, temporary hurt, or temporary frustration. For the Bible tells us that these light afflictions are only for a moment but they are working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory and I declare a new season over this house tonight to those of you who have doubted to those of you who have been fearful about what's next to those of you who have to learn how to relinquish your control to those of us who have had to take it one day at a time and one step at a time the Holy Spirit told me to tell you that this next season of your life will be a season called assurance somebody lift your hands open your mouth and declare over your own life this is my season of assurance come on y'all not saying it like you believe it lift your hands open up your mouth and declare over your own life this is my season of assurance I heard the songwriter say, be not dismayed, whatever be tied, because God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love we can abide, God will take care of you. And I believe that's why David penned the words, that the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid with the wicked even my enemies and my foes they came upon me to eat up my flesh the Bible says they stumbled and fell though I hope though a host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear the war should rise against me and this will I be confident that sounds like assurance to me and David went on to say one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide I mean, and I just stopped by during midweek shift to let somebody know tonight that God is going to make good on every one of his promise. You can be assured that if God said it, that you can believe it. And that simply settles it. I don't care what it looks like I don't care what the enemy has said I don't care what the doctors have said my faith tells me that everything is going to be alright as a matter of fact I done turned my faith up a notch and I believe that everything is already alright it's not getting ready to happen but it's happening right now can you have five your neighbor and show neighbor it's happening right now show neighbor it's happening right now your healing is manifesting and it's manifesting right now your deliverance is happening and it's happening right now your family is being restored and it's happening right now your debts are being cancelled and it's happening right now doors are being open and it's happening right now your steps are being ordered and they're being ordered right now God's gonna make a way and it's doing it right now God's gonna fix it and it's doing it right now can you grab somebody near you and tell them it's happening for me right now 
whatever I've been praying for I've got enough faith to believe it's not getting ready to happen it's not gonna happen next week it's not gonna happen in 2024 I will see the goodness of the Lord yes sir in the land of the living wait I say on the Lord wait I say on the Lord for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint anybody in the room made up in your mind that I'm going to wait on him I'm going to wait on him because whatever the enemy meant for evil God will turn it around for my good that's why I can say with the assurance that Paul had that I know with absolute certainty that all things work together for the good for the good of those who love God for those who are called according to his purpose I love God so it's got to work for my good I trust God so it's got to work for my good I got faith in God so it's got to work for my good and I will not allow doubt to rule my mind because it's going to work for my good I'm done dreaming small based on what I see in my bank account because it's going to work for my good I'm going to submit the application submit it by faith because it's going to work for my good I'm healing from emotional wounds because even if they happened 10 years ago they still gotta work for my good I'm gonna stop cursing every hard season because now I got assurance that it is gonna work it is gonna work I heard the songwriter say tests and trials try to take you out disappointments have left you in a drought but I have good news from glory this is not the end of your story find you a neighbor that look like they got the Holy Ghost grab your neighbor and say neighbor this is not the end of your story I know it's been hard but this is not the end of your story I know you cried but this is not the end of your story I know you're frustrated but this is not the end of your story I know you need answers but this is not I said this is not the end of your story so I'll praise God because even though I don't know everything there's one thing I do know I praise him because I may not know everything but there's one thing I do know I can shout without all the answers because there's one thing I do know I can worship without all the details because there's one thing I do know I can dance even while I'm in it because there's one thing there's one thing there's one thing I do know that all things all things all things, all things, all things, whether good or bad, whether happy or sad, all things will work together 
for my good. If you believe it, lift your hands, throw your head back, and shout all things. I want you to think about the hard thing you've been facing and say it again. All things. Think about that sickness and say it again. All things. Think about the discomfort and say it again. All things. All things. All things are going to work together. And if you know they're gonna work, I dare you to take the next 18 seconds, open up your mouth and bless the Lord like you believe that nothing in your life is gonna go to waste. Praise Him like you believe that no season of your life is gonna go to waste. Praise Him like you know that no tear will go to waste, but everything. I'm assured, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God. I've been born of his spirit. I've been washed in his blood. So I'm assured that all things. Go find three people. High five them real good and tell them I'm assured. I'm assured. I am assured every time you see me shouting please understand that it's not for entertainment purposes I praise them because I'm assured every time you see my hands go up baby I'm not trying to entertain you but I worship because I'm assured went through hell from Monday to the time I clocked out of work but I walked in here assured that all things will work together lay hands on yourself and say for my good for my good what the devil tried to use to kill you God's gonna use to cause you to live said when the devil tried to use to kill you God is going to use it and cause you to live I prophesy over this house that God is getting ready to flip the script one more time somebody holler I am assured I am assured that on an ongoing basis, God is going to take care of me. I am assured that on an ongoing basis, God is going to come through for me. I am assured on an ongoing basis, God's going to look out for me. And that lets me know that there will never arise an issue that God is not prepared to see me through. Now I understand why the songwriter said and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Because he's going to continually make it work. That's why David said, I will continue. I will bless the Lord at all times. I got to praise him at all times because he's working at all times. <laughs> I got to 
praise him at all times because every time I turn around, he's making a way. Every time I turn around, he's opening a door. I'm persuaded. I am assured. One more time, somebody holler all things. All things will work together. We are certain that God cares about us. His care is certain. His care is comprehensive. That means it includes everything. <laughs> and his care is cohesive. He will cause everything to work for your good. And I don't know how many of you have found yourselves in seasons. We're right in the middle of it. You begin to say to yourself, ain't no way. God's going to do anything with this. Take it, throw it in the trash. Forget about it. I don't want to talk about it. It never existed. God, just get me out. I won't even bring it up again. But God says, even that season. Woo! John chapter 9 says, the disciples walked up to a blind man. They began to question why this man was blind. They said, did, did his mama sin? Did his daddy sin? Did he sin? Jesus said, nobody sinned. He's blind for my glory. And it takes a mature believer to humble yourself in the middle of a season you don't have control over. And allow, and some of, yes Lord, some of you need to allow God to make it work for your good. You got to step back, relinquish your control and let him make it work. You stop trying to make it work. And let God make it work. Standing all over this sanctuary, just tell somebody else, I'm assured. Without a doubt, without second guessing, without going back and forth about my faith, I'm assured that all things work together. Not only do they work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Somebody lift your hands and say, that's me. That's me. I love God. And I know I've been called according to his purpose. And if you fall in that category, you got to believe that all things are going to work together for your good. Hands lifted all over the room just to worship God for a few seconds. We're getting ready to go. God, we thank you that all things are working together for our good. We thank you that it's going to work out and it's going to work out for our good. I ask God that you strengthen our faith in you. I ask God that you give us so much faith that doubt is silenced. That we have no room to doubt. That we have no room to second guess. We believe. But Lord help thou our unbelief. Give us the type of assurance that Paul had. That right in the middle of what seems like a helpless and hectic situation. We can echo the words that we have absolute certainty. That on an ongoing basis, you are going to make it work for our good. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. And we appreciate you being such an intentional father. That we will never encounter anything that you don't intend to use. We love you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's stop.